How's it going folks? Welcome back to the Carter Redux channel. My name's Tommy. This is the first video in a series that I'm putting together focusing on creating base maps in ArcGIS Pro. So let's spend a little bit of time just reestablishing a baseline of common terminology and just review the basic concepts of caching. Now, if this is your first foray into creating base maps inside ArcGIS Pro, you've come to the right place. Welcome. What is caching? Generating cache, cooking cash. Me, I cook cash for a living. It's what I've been doing since I started at Esri all the way back in 2005. Now, caching is a method for optimizing how your maps are consumed and delivered over the web. Caching can be really useful, especially if you have an interactive web map with lots of features and complex symbology, because usually that translates to a map that takes a long time to draw on demand. Now, these types of maps that draw on the fly are referred to as dynamic maps or dynamic map services. But what if we could pre-render our maps and store those on disk in a really efficient format? That way, when someone is looking at our map, they can just skip that whole database drawing and labeling mess and just get the necessary parts of their map the person's asking for. That, in a nutshell, is what caching accomplishes. Caching can be broken down into two categories or flavors of cache raster tiles and vector tiles. Now raster tiles are pre-rendered snapshots of your map. So we're going to take your map, we're going to chop it up into a grid of JPEGs and PNGs called tiles. Generally speaking, raster tiles are the most flexible in terms of the kinds of maps that can be optimized as raster tiles. So we can take vector content, imagery, elevation data, the form of like say a tinted hillshade base map, as well as 3D terrain or an elevation surface. Now these raster tiles can be stored as either a cache data set or a tile package. Now if we look at a cache data set inside ArcGIS Pro, that thing on the top, it just looks like a raster data set. But if you browse to the folder that mess underneath that, um, there's a lot going on there. There's folders, there's files, there's a lot of ins, a lot of outs, a lot of what have yous. Tile packages on the other hand, just a single file. It looks just like you would expect it either in ArcGIS Pro or in Windows Explorer. Now the tiles themselves can exist in a few different formats. So we talked about JPEGs and PNGs. Now with JPEG, you're typically going to see that described also in terms of compression or quality. So when you see JPEG 75, that's actually describing the quality of the JPEG. So it's 75% quality, 25% compression. Now we can get really good file sizes because of that compression, but the trade-off with JPEGs is that they don't support transparency. Thankfully, PNGs do support transparency. Now in the ArcGIS ecosystem, we can create PNGs in, as PNG8, PNG24, and PNG32. And those numbers, those refer to the bit size or the bit depth. The larger the bit depth, the more colors that can be represented by that PNG. There are also what I refer to as two smart tile formats, just the generic PNG without a bit depth, as well as a mixed tile format. Now with the PNG tile format, the caching algorithm or the cooker is going to determine an appropriate bit depth based on your map's content. So if you've got like ocean or large areas of just flat colors, we can get away with a smaller PNG, a smaller bit depth, smaller bit depth, smaller PNG file size. You do that a couple of bajillion times in your map and you can actually get some measurable storage savings as a result. The downside with PNG though, is there is a bit of a performance hit that you take during caching because it is a bit computationally intensive to, to calculate the appropriate bit depth per tile. But again, maybe that, that trade-off of perhaps a slightly slower cache generation as opposed to the storage savings that you get, maybe that's a meaningful compromise you're willing to make. The mixed smart tile type, as the name implies, is actually gonna combine both JPEGs and PNGs in the same cache data set. The, the best example is usually if you've got a small region, metropolitan area of high resolution imagery, you want to generate a base map of just those pixels. And then you want to combine that with another base map that's basically statewide or global in scope. With a JPEG, you're going to generate lots of white areas that's going to obscure the surrounding areas. And we don't want to do that. In this case, around the edges of our tiles, we want to create transparent tiles. 
by way of PNGs. The mixed format is going to intelligently create PNGs around the edge. And then in the inside where we've got all of our pixels, that's where we're gonna be generating JPEG tiles. Now there's one more tile type and it's a bit of a mouthful. The acronym is LURK and it stands for Limited Error Raster Compression. It's really a fancy name for essentially taking the actual pixel values from a data set and encoding those values into the tile. Where this is most appropriate is with elevation. In other words, if we wanna create a 3D terrain cache data set, we're gonna use the lurk tile type. What this lets you do, because we'll actually have elevation values encoded in those tiles, is we can actually use that as an elevation surface inside ArcGIS Pro, ArcGIS Earth, or over the web in ArcGIS Online, or ArcGIS Enterprise in the web scene viewer. So which tile formats work best with different types of maps that we have. Map number one has got a lot of color variation because of that tinted hill shade that's drawing underneath all those vector layers, right? A PNG is gonna have a hard time really optimizing for all those different color variations. And as a result, it's gonna create a very large PNG. In this case, we're gonna stick with JPEG, specifically JPEG 90. Now, why the increase in quality? The default is JPEG 75. JPEG has a hard time with straight lines or text or even text with halos what you start to see with jpeg 75 is some noise artifacts that start cropping up it's the compression which is really having a hard time resolving those hard edges those hard lines and so to combat that we actually increase the quality decrease the compression so we increase it to jpeg 90 and that makes everything look great. Let's talk about map number two, this imagery base map here. If you're creating a global imagery base map, then you can use JPEG 75 or even dial back the quality like JPEG 60. You'll hardly sacrifice any visual quality by going that low. Um, and you actually get some measurable storage savings as a result too. But generally speaking, stick with mixed and JPEG 75 or mixed JPEG 60 for your imagery base map projects. Now maps three and four, this is actually where that PNG raster tile type is gonna do really well. We've got really flat color scheme, large areas of single colors. The PNG tile format is gonna do a really good job of crushing down those bit depths and really shrinking down the PNG sizes to a, a really nice manageable size. So we'll get, pay a little bit of a price on the processing time, but the storage savings that we get as a result will be worthwhile. Now we don't want to forget our good friend Lurk, limited area raster compression. Again, there's a very specific type of map that we're going to create where we want to use the Lurk tile and that's for this 3D terrain. We want to have an elevation surface to drape other stuff on and in this case we want to use Lurk. Now let's go back to um, maps one, three, and four. Let's talk about these for a second. They're vector content. So we're talking about raster tiles but if it's purely vector content like maps three and four, vector tile layers are where you want to be. Now this first map, you're actually combining a raster tile layer with a vector tile layer. So you can take the vector content and create a vector tile layer with that. Then you take that tinted hill shade and create your raster tiles and you kind of sandwich them up together inside of a web map. Pretty cool technique. That brings us to vector tiles as opposed to raster tiles which is pretty flexible in terms of the kind of content that you can use to create them vector tiles only work with vector content vector tiles are going to vary a little bit from raster tiles in that when you ask for a raster tile you're actually going to get your map on that raster tile on that jpeg or png vector tiles on the other hand you're getting tiled containers of your data and attributes and that tile is actually called a protocol buffer that file, the file format is a PBF, but you can't really do much with just attributes and data, geometry and attributes, right? You need some additional things to make this map work on any device. So along with the data tile, a vector tile is also gonna send a bunch of additional components so that your PC, your tablet, your mobile phone can actually render that map. You heard me right. Your device is actually, the client devices are actually gonna be the ones shouldering the burden of drawing the map. Okay, let that sink in. So now we need all the stuff so that my computer, your mobile phone can remake the map that I authored 
on your device. All the stuff that we're sending to your screen collectively is referred to as a tile set. Tile sets will contain the data tiles, the protocol buffers. It's gonna contain a style, the rendering instructions. Water is this color, roads are this way, they draw on top of this, as well as all of the optimized versions of our typefaces and weights and styles that we use to author our map. Those are called glyphs. All of our point symbols, all of our icons, our road shields and such, they're all gonna get dropped onto a single PNG, something called a sprite sheet. And those are our sprites. And then there's something special that um, is added to the tile set when you generate a vector tile layer or vector tile package inside ArcGIS Pro. And that's called an index. We're gonna spend some more time talking about that in the next video. Vector tile tile sets are stored as a VTPK, a vector tile package. And if you look at that inside ArcGIS Pro compared to Windows Explorer, it's just a single file. Do you remember that grid I keep mentioning? It's got a specific name. It's called a tiling scheme. This defines the grid that's used to slice and dice our map and the scales at which we're gonna render our map. So a tiling scheme is gonna consist of four main components, the coordinate reference system, the tile origin, this is where we start numbering our rows and columns of tiles, the levels of detail, the scales and the resolution, as well as the tile dimensions. Why are tiling schemes important? Well, when it comes to planning out our base maps and our de design considerations, if we wanna combine our base maps with other base maps, our tiling schemes need to be compatible. They need to align. And in particular, in a 2D map, we need to align the coordinate reference system, the tile origin, and the scales. And then for 3D, we also need to add the tile dimension. So if we align all those things, these two maps can be combined inside of a single application or a web map or app, and then viewed together. You doing all right? I know, that, I know it went kind of fast, uh, and it's a lot of information to throw at you all at once. So I'll tell you what, now is probably a good time to take a quick break. Um, we'll come back together in part two, which should be right over here. Uh, so when you're ready, head on over there and we're going to talk about the specific geoprocessing tools that you need to use based on the kind of map project that you're working on. So head over when you're ready. Uh, I'll be there just waiting, waiting for you. I'm, I'm actually already over there. The internet's so cool. Yeah. Well, I'll, uh... I'll leave you to it, and I'll see you over there. Take care.